What is going on everyone? It is Jordan Taylor Cut Films here. Right now I'm gonna do a quick tutorial showing you how I do some of my editing techniques. All right, so I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks of some editing techniques I use when editing within Adobe Premiere and the Creative Cloud. Okay, so when you're looking through the timeline right now, you can see that there are a bunch of nested sequences here. For example, this clip here is actually a nested sequence. If you're unfamiliar with what a nested sequence is or why to do it, I will show you right now. So specifically for this shot here, if you double click, this is what the clip looks like. Now you might be wondering why do I need to make it a nested sequence if it's already okay and plays fine. There are a few different reasons you'd want to nest a sequence. In this example, I'm wanting to add two different effects to a single clip. Warp Stabilizer, which is a specialized effect, and Time Remapping, which is a standard effect. Because of the way Premiere Pro's render engine prioritizes effects on the surface, it might seem like you can't add both. By creating a nested sequence, you can. Here's how. So let's take a look at the effects that I apply to this shot. If you go to the effect controls, you can see that I applied Warp Stabilizer. If you do not know what Warp Stabilizer is, it's a built-in plugin within Adobe Premiere that essentially takes a clip, analyzes it, then throws it into a gyroscope in order to make it smooth. Let me show you the before and after. Without Warp Stabilizer, a little bit shaky. With Warp Stabilizer, nice and smooth. If you are unfamiliar with how to add Warp Stabilizer, this is how you do it. So we're gonna work with this clip here. All you have to do is go into Effects. You could just search Warp. As you can see, Warp Stabilizer is a built-in plugin. Drag and drop. And if you look in Effects, it's starting to analyze the clip. There you go. Once it's done analyzing, you can go ahead and play through. And as you can see, it's much smoother. Now, if you want to, you can go within the Effects tab and mess around with the different subsettings. But for me, this looks pretty smooth, so I'm going to leave it as is. So now that the shot is nice and smooth after applying Warp Stabilizer, this is where nesting the sequence comes in. If I wanted to go ahead and speed ramp the shot as is, this is what would happen. Show keyframes, time remapping, speed. See, now when you try to apply keyframes for speed ramping when Warp Stabilizer is applied, you get this error message. So an easy workaround and an essential way in order to make this effect happen is by nesting your sequence. And we're gonna go ahead and right click, nest, and hit OK. Now, as you can see, this clip is now green, signifying that it is in fact a nested sequence. And Adobe Premiere is now able to recognize this as a native clip within the timeline. So now that the clip is nested, we can go ahead and apply the keyframes to do a speed ramp. If you do not know what speed ramping is, it's taking a clip, adding keyframes, and making it either go fast to slow or slow to fast. This is a technique I love to use in order to transition smoothly from one shot to the next. So for this specific transition, we are going from a fast pan of the trees and as you can see, it starts fast going down and then it's nice and slow. So you're going from fast to fast and it really makes the transition work. So the way I like to do speed ramping is by right clicking, show clip keyframes, time remapping and speed. Now you can see this white line where you're able to manipulate the speed of the clip. I'm gonna extend this so we can see better. And all I did here was start at the beginning of the clip, select a keyframe. You can go ahead and now Put your arrow over and drag it up and down and you can see the percentage start to change how fast you want it to be. For this, I think about 300% is good. Keep in mind we shot this at 120 frames per second. Now I only want it to go from fast to fast for a second. So what I went ahead and did was apply another keyframe here. And instead of being at 300, we drag it down back to be 100%, which is what the clip was. And then you can go ahead and take these arrows and if you want it just to become slow super fast, that's what it looks like, or if you want it to be a little bit more gradual, it looks a little something like that. Now this is creative choice, go ahead and play around and see what feels right to you. Now you might have been wondering and asking yourself, why does this clip have black appearing at the bottom and top? The reason is I like to add a mat, which is at the top here, which essentially makes it a widescreen bar and, and makes it look a little more cinematic. This is a trick I love to do. Another reason why I add the widescreen bar is so I can then add keyframes and do a digital tilt to a shot that doesn't have motion. So for this shot, I went to the beginning of the clip, added a position, and went ahead and changed it to 625. And then I went all the way to the end of the clip and added another keyframe, and then went ahead and dragged it to the bottom about 435. And now when you go ahead and watch that back, it's adding a tilt down. This just makes the clip more dynamic and is another neat trick in order to add some effects to your shot. 
So a lot of you may be wondering how to create widescreen bars for yourself if you wanted to. For me, all I did was create a nested sequence out of two black video bars. So this is my nested sequence here, as you can see, which is on top of everything. When you double click, this is what you have here. Black video one, black video two. You can create this just by going into help, matte. You can select new color matte, make it the dimensions of your sequence, and then just make it black. I titled mine black video. And then when you drag it into the sequence, here it is. Now, all you need to do is when it's laying on top of another shot, you can click on it, go to effect controls, and just move the position. As you move it down, you can determine exactly how wide you want it to be. Now, once you think you have each mat positioned in such a way that it's wide enough for you, all you gotta do is make a nested sequence just like we did before. Highlight, nest. Then when you go to edit, you can just throw your nested sequence on top of your entire timeline like I did here. And voila, you have widescreen bars. All right, in order to use some of the techniques and skills in this video, try Adobe Premiere Pro and the Creative Cloud for free with the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful.